learned already that names don't constitute knowledge, that they're knowing the name of something. That's caused me a certain trouble since, because I refuse to learn the name of anything. So when someone comes in and says, uh, you got any explanation for the Fitzclonan experiment? I says, what, what, what's that? He says, you know, that the long-lived K meson disintegrates into two pies. Oh, oh, yes, now I know. But I never know the names of things. What he forgot to tell me was that the knowing the names of things is useful if you want to talk to somebody else. <laughs> so you tell him what you're talking about. But the basic principle of knowing about something rather than just knowing its name is something that you stuck to, is it? Yes, of course. It's, well, you have to learn. These are kind of disciplines in the field of science that you have to learn. That to know when you know and when you don't know and what it is you know and what it is you don't know. And it's, uh, you've got to be very careful not to confuse yourself. Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Mind this one, Titanium. I have not made a public video in a very long time. I've been uh, more focused on um, doing more Twitter. I've decided to go more retail uh, lately. I'm starting to expand my uh, Patreon uh, page. And, um, you know, I... I've been fighting MMT for such a long time and I've told you that you know when I first started making QMMT and this was uh, four or five years ago quantifying modern monetary theory the goal was to prove that it works that was my goal and on this long journey of trying to prove that MMT works in the real markets in the real world I've discovered that it doesn't okay and I can basically sum it up and tell you that go no government can print value for a currency, period. It cannot be done. Value can only come from the private sector. So when you hear government debt equals private sector savings, yes, to whom is that savings for? And it's for the top 5%. And it's liabilities for the other 95%. Okay? And you saw that in Cyprus very clearly when they came out one day and they said, look, anybody that has any money above $100,000, it's now ours. Who's the liability for? The 95%. Who in Greece is paying for uh, all those deficits? The 95%. What happened to the 5%? They took their money and went to Germany. Right? They bought those bonds. They went elsewhere went to the US bought stocks so who's the liabilities left for 95 percent okay we've also seen uh, recently uh, how government debt stimulus rate cuts all of these supposedly uh, monetary uh, adjustments if you want to call them that have not really translated into a stronger economy. What they have done is push up asset price inflation, something that we've talked about as pure MMTers that is going to happen. I've said this now for three years. Government debt equals private sector savings for the top 5%, liabilities for the 95%, and the top 5% take those dollars and they push up asset prices. And we've been cutting rates now since, what, July? Way before coronavirus. Don't even get me started on that. Repos, not QE, but it is QE, right? Tax cuts, trillion dollar deficits. And all that was mid-cycle adjustment or some bullshit like that. And what's happened? The economy has continued to deteriorate. Now we have this coronavirus pandemic because it's multinational. It's everywhere. Okay, it's not isolated in one in one country, one region. Right, it's everywhere. 70 countries plus. And now they come out and do a try to shock the markets, not the economy, the markets with a 50% emergency rate cut to stimulate supposedly the economy are you really going to go out to a mall to a concert 
to a baseball game, a basketball game, whatever, March Madness, you're going to go to the Olympics and risk catching the flu, bronchitis, mild case of pneumonia, sniffles. Are you going to do that? Because it's very cool to say that on social media, to say it on Twitter and Facebook. Oh, it's just a flu. It's a, it's a hoax against Trump. Right? Everybody's in on it. The whole planet. CDC is in on it. China's in on it. Hong Kong. Korea. Italy. They're all in it. They're trying to get Trump overthrown. That's why we, we have coronavirus. I mean, people are ridiculous. So now when we need the stimulus, supposedly, right, the rate cuts, the repos, and so forth, it's not, there's nothing, what, what are you going to do now? There's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. So this is a completely different kind of, a, uh, of, a, of an economy going forward because it has been deteriorating. And now the trigger, coronavirus, uh, is really going to put us into a recession. That's right. You heard me say the word recession. And uh, you're going to see it. And I said, when I first started this many years ago, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to prove that MMT works. Didn't do that. Right? I did the opposite. I proved that it doesn't work. That it's bullshit. And I said that I'm going to I'm going to tell you when the top comes. And I'm here and I'm telling you where the top is. And if you think this little 16% decline has done anything to the charts, to the, to the economy and that oh wow, that was, you know, it's time to buy, let's nibble, right? Let's buy the dip. You are grossly wrong it hasn't even started yeah you, you don't know what selling is okay you, you're probably too young or you never uh, paid attention in 2008 okay maybe you weren't into stocks or you have some two thousand dollar account and you think now you're an expert because the market has been going up and it's trained you for the past decade to buy the dips buy the dips buy the dips it works great until it doesn't. And then when it doesn't, reality sets in. And I'll tell you right now, bear markets are a fucking bitch. You are, you're up in the morning, down in the afternoon, and all-time highs by uh, the late session, and then by market close, you're down 1,000%. I mean, 1,000 uh, points. That's, that's what you're going to be dealing with. And if you so-called little experts out there think that you're going to trade this and volatility, you know, you're going to, you're going to make the, the, the most amount of money. You're going to get crushed. You're going to blow out your accounts. Next point, MMT is an utter failure. Why? Why is it an utter failure? Because all the marketing that government and Fed and everybody has done to this point and saying it's a mid-cycle adjustment of rate cuts. We are going to have tax cuts and grow the economy 4%. And we're going to do this. And, and all this well, trade deals are coming. It's fantastic. Everything is wonderful. Everything is fine. More people are working than ever before. We have more jobs than people looking for jobs. Uh, longest job expansion in history. You know, it always looks like that. And I don't mean necessarily in the same manner, but... The data always looks really, really, really good before it starts to decline. Okay, that's what happens. And you're going to start seeing that unemployment is going to start rising. You're going to start seeing all the data points start to deteriorate. Uh, and you're going to start seeing everything turn very, very bearish going forward. I don't care what you think about coronavirus. I'm telling you right now, and I've started on on this from day one when it was 300 cases. I said, this is not like SARS. This is not like MERS. This is completely different. Okay. And it's going to have an impact on the global economy. First, it hit China. Then it went to Asia. And now it's going global. The market was going up it was blowing up in my face january february okay until one day people woke up and they're like oh shit 
and they sold it and sold it and sold it and we had the fastest decline uh, in, uh, in history to go down more than 10%. We went down 16%. And then you had all the, it's just the flu, by the dippers, the Trump uh, followers, wave followers, you know, they're, they're just so cool. They're like, yeah, oh, I'm just buying, yeah, I'm just buying. It's, it's going higher, buy the dip, it's just the flu, right? And they all got crushed. The bounce. What does the bounce mean? I don't know what a bounce means. No idea. Bounce. The bounce. You can't make money off bounces. You can't. You try to to catch on to a falling life. You're gonna cut yourself. And if you think again that that was some kind of a you know uh, be greedy when everybody else is fearful and fearful when everybody else is greedy and all this bullshit and you think that's what you did. Okay, buying into this dip, God knows where, 5% down, 8% down, maybe 10, I don't know where you bought. But you you don't know what that means because you never understood what real selling is, is like. And when you look at this chart, we haven't even begun to sell. And when we do, you're going to really understand what buying the bounce, the dip, and all this. I'm going to nibble on the way down. I don't know what nibble on the way down means. I'm a long-term investor. I'll just keep adding to it. Really? So that's a license for you to lose money in your 401k and your whatever, your investments? No, that's stupid. That's just dumb. Well, for the vast majority of the people, that's the way it should be. Yes, I agree, because I don't know what they're talking about. I don't have a problem with those people. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what's going on. That's that's fine. No problem there. But for the people that are, you know, all over social media telling everybody else what to do and, oh, this is great. Yeah, you should be nibbling down 16% and no, 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 all this bullshit. They're full of shit. Those guys don't know what they're talking about. Especially when those guys were arm waving, oh, the market 160% lower. Oh, the market is going to go down. It's going to go down for the past five years. Right, 10 years, 11 years, they've been saying this the whole way up, and now the market goes down 16%, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, this is the time to start nibbling. Really? Really? 16%? <laughs> Fucking last decade you've been crying about, oh, the market is going to crash, and now just you, you go down 16%, and you go on national television, and you're sitting there saying, oh, yeah, you know, it's time to nibble, and you're the economist, the financial expert that you should be on TV telling that to people? Come on, man. Come on. Shame, shame, shame. How about the Logans, the Perma Bulls? Oh, you know, the real economy's kicking the shit out of the bears. <laughs> you know, and then the market drops 16% and, oh, you know, maybe it's uh, it's not that good yet. Uh, and then when it's down 25%, uh, okay, now I'm bearish, yeah? Well, you just missed fucking 25% of a market drop. And now you're going to tell people what? To sell? 25% in the hole? It's too late. It's way too late. Oh, you don't understand how it works. Really, I don't? No, you know, the, the market is going to keep going up until the Trump is elected. What the? How the fuck does anybody invest like that? What? What kind of analysis is that? No, no, they're gonna they're gonna keep it up. Conspiracies. That people could come up with these crazy things. You think investing is based on making such stupid comments? Wow, wow, jeez. And they're all over social media. You know, these are the experts. These are the ones with the PhD. Let me tell you a secret. You know who the economist is? Is the person that can read the market correctly. It's the person that can understand what the economy is doing. That's an economist. An economist is not some person with a piece of paper coming up with stupid models that don't work. There's no model that can work, that, that, that can factor in coronavirus, that can sit here and say, oh, you know, government debt equals private sector assets. Look, you know, if we just keep stimulating and pumping money into the economy, we're, gonna, we're, we're just going to create more and more jobs. Okay, great. And we're going to make the economy bigger. Really? Yeah. Okay. So what do we do this past eight, nine months? 
tax cuts from 2017 the taxes all all through 2018 tax cuts right interest rate cuts repos QE what about before that more QE right and it's not just domestic remember it's not just domestic it's China it's Europe it's everywhere in the world just pump 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 liquidity into this into the system and what what does QE do real quickly what does it do it takes bonds it removes them from the open market it puts it on the Fed's balance sheet the Fed in return gives dollars reserves to the banking system I love that one oh it's the banking system yes it's in the banking system because that's where Warren Buffett has his fucking money in the banking system Warren Buffett is the one that's buying the bonds right Jeff Bezos Gates pension funds they're the owners of it of course the banks themselves have some money into uh the, but it's the banking system <laughs> you kidding come on now <sighs> makes me crazy anyway let's continue so when the bonds available the supply of bonds are reduced and the cash is increased where what do you think is going to happen those dollars are going to push yields down okay because the price of a bond is going to rise and the yields are going to fall where are those extra cash all the, the those reserves in the banking system where do you think they're going to flow they're going to flow into stocks okay and those stocks relative to the amount of dollars relative to the, uh, the supply of stocks it's going to rise Okay. and then we ended up in a situation where we're getting a multiple expansion what's a multiple expansion it's when there's not more earnings okay despite the five trillion dollars of stock buybacks the earnings are not rising relative to price so you are buying at a more expensive level okay and getting the same amount of earnings keep buying value stays the same so what does Buffett say price is what you pay value is what you get and then you end up with a PE of 28 right and then what happens something like coronavirus comes around and it's going to affect the E the earnings and when that happens right what happens to the P if it stays at the same same level right the PE rises exponentially especially if the earnings per shares fall dramatically so then what you're in a recession that's what happens let me show you something this is back on November 20th and if you're not following me on trading view you should because I give you a lot of free stuff there okay I leave a lot of the the more important stuff for my subscribers on patreon.com slash real macro but I'll give you some nice stuff here as well and I told you here okay if you go back and you look at this I said this is a bearish structure this is a fear indicator okay it's a 10-year year yield so what happened boom straight down okay where is interest rates today below 1% all right below 1% let me show you another one this is back in November 30th 2019 and I said look price is above corporate earnings okay it's flat it's at 1.848 trillion dollars and it has been the same way since 2012 2011 okay corporate earnings are not rising despite the fact that we have more people working than we did in 2011 despite the fact that wages are rising in real terms okay despite all the deficits government debt goes up savings and all this nonsense okay and what's happened every single time that price the S&P 500 has gone way above corporate profits right boom it falls apart boom falls apart falls apart falls apart falls apart and now we're above it so what do you think is going to happen it's going to fall apart okay that's the way it works and I and I give you this free information I, I don't know if people are understanding it 
And that's why they should come down and, and join and subscribe at patreon.com slash real macro for 1995. I mean, it's peanuts, right? But this is important stuff. Understanding value, understanding price. And just a quick note here, very quick note. Corporate profits does not mean the same thing as earnings per share. You can manipulate earnings by sh per share by buying back your own stock and make it seem that the same amount of, earn uh, of, of profit that you're making per share, okay, it, it's, it's a bigger uh, ratio. But as far as the S&P 500 goes, corporate profits have, have not risen, okay, uh, since 2012. Here's another uh, little beauty. Okay, Nifty 50, India, index. This was uh, back in December 24, 2019. All right, looking look for the downside. Oh, oh, what happened? Boom, straight down. Okay, got to at least join. You know, follow me on, pay, on uh, TradingView. <laughs> it's free. It's, it's free stuff. What about oil? Okay, this is also December 24, 2019. What happened to oil? It's going lower, right? What happened? You got the Iran fuck fuckery. You got that big spike right in here. And then what happened? Boom, collapsed. Okay? Free stuff. Do I need to have a PhD in economics to tell you that this is going to happen? No, of course not. You don't need to have it either. You know what you need to do? You need to understand economics and understand how it all works. And oil is not based on OPEC cuts. It's not based on EIA reports and, you know, trying to decipher what it all means. That's a waste of time. All you need to know on that, on, on, uh, for oil, is, is global demand going to rise over the next 6 to 12 months? If the answer is no, then why the fuck are you buying oil? It's very simple. It's not hard. You don't have to be, have a PhD in economics to do that you know there's a lot of people that like to hear themselves talk out there they there's there's just an enormous amount of people that just blah 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 all day long and la, 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 all over social media they're all experts everybody knows what the hell they're doing and in reality is they don't know what the hell they're talking about i have my economic six-point model and i'm going to tell you this and i'm and i you know the real economy is beating you and you know uh, you want to start nibbling 16% down, 10% down here, you know, because there's a lot of value. And that's another thing. I asked, I went back, I've been asking, since I turned bearish back in September, I've been asking people that are perma bulls, why are you buying, where's the value? What are you buying in stocks right now? And I've heard the dumbest things you could possibly imagine. The dumbest things. Where's the value? There is no value. Okay, it's a top. We're going, we're heading for a recession. We're heading for a bear market. It's coming. And yet these people call themselves investors or economists or whatever, financial guys, whatever. Mistake. January 27th. I post this VIX chart and I say, look, this complacency land down here, it's breaking out. You know what? This is going much, much higher. And what happened? Boom. Thank you very much. Hmm? Hmm? How's that call? You see, that's so vitally important because other people talk about the market without showing you what they're holding, what they're trading, what their calls are. They're just using words, cute stories, after-the-fact analysis. Mine is not like that. I am completely different. I'm transparent. I'm telling you where I'm buying, where I'm selling, especially for my subscribers, of course. Okay? What my portfolios are, what my struggles are, mo most importantly, because you're all going to go through the same struggles if you want to be successful investors. It's not all perfect. I get shit wrong, right? I learned from that. It's not all fun and games. Here's another one. This is from January 27th. This is the S&P 500 on an hourly chart. You can clearly see it's, in, it's inside this channel here, okay? And I'm, I'm giving you a nice big arrow saying, look, this is going down here. This is dropping. Let's see what happened. 
it bounces, comes down, kaboom. Thank you very much. Not only did it hit my price target, but it went even lower. Again, this is free stuff I'm giving you, right? This is transparency. I don't just go on Twitter and say, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, I give you the, the time, when, and how. Okay. Here's another one, February 13th, NDX, one hour. Okay. I said, this channel is going to break to the downside. What happened? Initially went up and then collapsed. Okay. Big, big drop. Here's another one. And this one is for the private. Okay. There's a lot of things that I do on trading view that is not public, that is only for subscribers. Right. This is the DAX, 60 minutes. And I said, this is going lower. Okay. What happened? Did it go lower? Right. Bet your ass it did. You bet your ass it did. Put all the updates right in here. Okay, looking good, holding short. All right. For these trades, you got to be in, in, you know, a Patreon su subscriber, patreon.com slash real macro. Let me show you this one. Okay, this is not hard to read. It's a very simple chart. And he tells you every time that rates bunch up, price falls. Rates bunch up, rates fall. What happens when the, the rates start to fall? recession occurs so I have a big question mark here like okay you know <laughs> look it's bunched up it's gonna drop recession is coming right and I even have it on the title boom straight down you see who sets rates by the way right it's not the Fed rates started falling before the Fed Fed is playing catch-up to the rates all right so <laughs> Why is the bond market so fearful? What, are they stupid? They don't know what's going on? Why they? And don't don't think that it's coronavirus. Coronavirus is a trigger. The economy has been weakening, okay, since December of 2018. That's when the economy started to weaken. And it was building up to December 18th. And then it happened. And, and it made sense to nobody when the market went down 25%. Not even me. I was not expecting something that, that big. But markets don't do uh, anything without a reason. You just don't understand the reason at the moment. Later, they become very clear. February 21st, I come out and I say, look, the SPX priced in gold is weakening. SPX is weakening against gold. And it's been going on for a while. When did it start? October of 2018 was the top, which tested the previous top. All right. This has been going on for a while. Just because you're not aware of it doesn't mean it's not happening. And that's why you have to become a subscriber to patreon.com slash real macro. All right. What's happened since? Boom. SPX has been underperforming gold. All right. And again, this is free stuff. But if you don't know what you're looking at, if you don't understand how to interpret the data, you're not going to understand it. Okay. Let me give you another little, little nice little thing. I turned bearish September roughly, 2019. This is what the chart looked like of the 10 and the 2s. Okay. This is what's happening. Do you know what this means? Hmm? When this starts to rise, okay, we're going into a recession. All right. There's no golden, there's no one chart that is going to tell you what the hell is going on. Forget about that. That's that's. There's no model. There's no one chart. You got to understand all the data. Look at all the data. See what is pertinent. Focus on that. Take that information, contrast that with the market, see what's right and who's wrong, what's the bond saying, what's the stock market saying, what's the currency market saying. Yeah, this is not easy stuff to do. Okay, but let me let, let me show you this nice little trick. Okay, it's not a trick, it's just reality. 
every single time that this 10 and 2 starts to spike, this is back in 2000, you get a recession. What happened in 2007? It started to spike. What happened? We got a recession. What is it doing now? It's spiking. The fact that nobody has told you we are in a recession does not mean we're not going towards a recession. You understand? And it's it's very frustrating when you're in a sea of crazy people all over social media saying all kinds of crazy things. Misleading people. Nibble, 16% down. You know, I'm buying because I'm a long-term investor. Where's the value? I don't know, but I'm buying. <laughs> You're not an economist. You don't, you're a pilot. Uh, haters. You know? You got you got Logan. Oh, yeah, the real economy is kicking the shit out of the bears. Market is going at all-time highs. woo Right? And all these things are happening in the background, and I'm sitting here like, what? 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 <sighs> Very frustrating. And, and again, it, it looks easy now, but it's not easy. It's not. It's extremely difficult. So, anyway, do yourself a favor, at the very least, right, follow me on Twitter, follow me on uh, TradingView, subscribe to patreon.com slash realmacro, you'll get access to my hidden uh, private Twitter, uh, live chat, uh, all my uh, Patreon videos, and, uh, and I, I promise you, you're going to learn a lot. Okay, you're going to learn a lot. So that's it, guys. You know, get ready. Get ready for a bear market. Get ready for a recession. Emergency rate cuts do not occur because the economy is great. Okay, rate cuts don't happen because the economy is great. Mid-cycle adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, repos don't occur because the economy is healthy. MMT doesn't work. We tried it. Didn't work. Eh, wrong. Okay, we're going to stimulate before the economy starts to tank. No, no. And we're going to avoid the recession. No, it doesn't work like that. Right? What we did was we fired off all the bullets preemptively and it failed. We're still going into a recession. Didn't work. The only thing we managed to do is artificially pump up asset prices, create multiple expansion, go into this euphoria, make everybody think, buy the dips, nibble on the way down at 16% at all-time highs, and blah, blah, blah. And in reality is, we're going towards a recession, and everybody that is listening to these crazy people <coughs> and making stupid predictions <coughs> are going to get hurt. Just like I called the top in gold, just like I called the top in oil, just like I, I called the top in Bitcoin, okay, and then I said buy at the bottom below 6,500, and then we went all the way up to 13,000, right? I don't make videos for the sake of making them like a monkey. I don't sell cute stories. I don't tell you after the fact what happened. I'm full transparency. I'm not a perma bull. I'm not a perma bear. I'm not a political ideologue, okay? I don't care. <laughs> When I see it, I call it as I see it, and that's it. And if you're good enough to do it and post your uh, your trades live for everybody to see, the good and the bad, okay, then you got you got you got lever you got credibility, right? Wounds of honor are always self-inflicted. Okay, you don't need to be an economist to to be an economist. You don't need a piece of paper to tell you, a PhD, to tell you if you understand economics or not. You do, however, need a pilot's license and a type rating, an air transport pilot, okay, and a type rating on a specific aircraft to fly it. It's not the same thing. Not everybody can fly an Airbus, and not, not everybody can be an economist, even if they have a PhD degree. Remember that, okay? Don't listen to these clowns. Be smart. We're going towards a recession. We're going towards a bear market. Get ready. Remember who told you this. Take care. Have a good day. Good night. Bye-bye. Before this battle's over, the world will know that few 
stood against many.